The Magic can accept losing to a certain point. But this season had a purpose. This season has a purpose. And right now, the Magic are not serving that purpose. It's time to dive into yet another loss. And it's time to ask some big questions. It's time for Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is December 5th, 2022. My name is Philip Ross Reich. I'm the expert insight editor over at Orlando Magic Daily.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, the Orlando Magic take another bad loss to the Toronto Raptors. One where they're just frankly not competitive. It's time to ask some big questions about this team as they continue to struggle to break this eight-game losing streak. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. It did not take very long Saturday night for the Toronto Raptors to put their grips into the Orlando Magic. Um, I I think I said this on the pod Friday night or Saturday morning. Um, The Raptors are pretty much the absolute worst matchup for the Orlando Magic right now. Um, Yes, the Raptors are kind of the team the Magic are modeling themselves after and and, and want to be or have taken kind of some of their ideas and and at least size-wise put them into a little bit of overdrive, but... The Raptors' identity is very, very set. They are a strong, strong, strong defensive team. They want to get deflections. They want to get steals. They want to get out in transition. And whatever shortcomings they have offensively in the half court, they make up for because they lead the league in turnovers forced. They lead the league in points in the paint. They lead the league in fast break points. And right now... Those are the three things the Magic struggle with the most. Right now, at least, with the group that the Magic have and and, and, the, and, and the way that they're playing, the Magic struggle with that. So Saturday was rough. Friday and Sunday in Orlando, you hope, are going to be a lot better. But the Raptors put their, put their claws into the Orlando Magic very, very quickly. And never really let go from a steal that led to a basket in the opening moments of the game to, I think I think I, I looked it up, the Raptors scored on 10 of their first 12 possessions. Just easy baskets in the paint. 70 points in the paint. The, the third time, the second time the Magic have allowed that in the last week. Just a constant ease into the, ba- into, the in, into the paint, into the lane, into the shots the Raptors want. And, it wasn't that Orlando was that bad offensively. It's that the Raptors were just so good, shooting 60%, and you're 60% for the first half. The Raptors won, I think it was 123, 108, but that was not the final score. They led by as much as 33. And Orlando was never really in the game. Kudos to the Magic's bench group. They played hard. They were disruptive defensively. They made their shots. They made the lead respectable. But we're not going to pretend that that's anything real. We're not going to pretend that that is some moral victory to claim. It's just a fact that the Magic made the score look better than it was. Nearly getting the backdoor cover in the process. I find that funny. I don't know if anyone else does. This was just... This was just an awful game. One of the worst the Magic have played all season long. And that's saying something. And most of the Magic's worst games have come during this eight-game losing streak. Five of the Magic's eight games in this eight-game losing streak have come by double digits. And again, Orlando has 14 clutch games. I think they've played two games during this eight-game losing streak under clutch conditions within five points in the final five minutes. This, before we get to X's and O's, before we get to 
how the Magic actually played, and we're going to get to that. This is plainly unacceptable. Yes, we expected this team to lose. Yes, we expected this team to struggle and 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 to take some lumps and take the take some lessons. Um yes, we expected the Magic to be near the bottom of the standings. Sorry to people who thought this was a playoff team and and as I said this is as as I've said several several times this is a playoff capable roster that a very unlikely team to take that leap. So yes, all of that is true. But we did not expect this, and we cannot accept this. The Magic themselves did not put a win total or standing position in their goals for the season. Their goals for the season were to level up, quote-unquote level up. And to all of us, that meant, or the way that they explained what that meant, it meant reducing mistakes, not repeating mistakes, being involved in more close games, having more chances to win, having that opportunity to learn how to win. And so, when I look at this Magic team, I don't care that the Magic are 3-11 and in close games. Back at the beginning of the season, at the very start of the season when it was happening, it was... This is exactly what we want. It was a feather in our cap that we could say, okay, all we got to do is learn how to win these close games and the Magic are going to be golden. They're right there knocking on the door and they're going through the lessons and the hard times that young teams have to go through. This is part of that too. I'm not going to deny that, but I would rather lose every game by two points and the heartache knowing you're so close than this. Because these games are not competitive. I'd rather the Magic lose by 15 because they run out of gas in the fourth quarter than to not be in the game at all. Being non-competitive, playing second halves that do not matter, that aren't going to teach you anything, that aren't going to bring with them the pressure of trying to win, even if nominally giving you that pressure, is not going to teach this team anything. And yes, we are expecting this team to get another high draft pick, to be in that running. That part's not, the record is not the surprising part. Orlando had five wins at this time last year too. That's not the surprising part of this equation. The surprising part is how non-competitive this team is. Those are the losses, the 30-point losses, the blowout losses, the games where the second half, the fourth quarter are just playing out the clock. Those are the losses that we thought were behind us. Those are the losses that this franchise, that this team should have the pride to say, we're not losing that way anymore. So yeah, lose because you run out of gas in the fourth quarter or, or you just don't have the horses. That's fine. We understand we don't have the horses. And, and like I've said, failure is, an, is a learning opportunity for this team, but you're not going to learn anything if you're so far out of the race that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you try because you don't know whether the other team is giving you their all there either. Too many of these losses of late from, la- from the game two Mondays ago against the Indiana Pacers to the losses to Philadelphia 76ers, to now the loss to Atlanta Hawks to some extent, and this loss to the Toronto Raptors. Games where the Magic are not even making a run at the lead, or capable of making a run at the lead, these these losses just cannot happen. And so, one of the things, one of the big buzzwords the Magic had for themselves during the offseason was accountability. It's time to hold this team accountable to that. It's time to say about this team and to this team, you've got to do better. You've got to do more. You've got to learn these lessons. Whatever these lessons might be. 
what we saw Saturday night, what we've been seeing during this eight-game losing streak, the way that this team is letting go of the rope, the way this team is just fading into obscurity, that cannot happen anymore. And look, they don't have to win games. but They'll break this losing streak eventually. They're not going to finish the season with five wins. But they've got to find the will and the energy to get themselves back in. And to maintain that through these final 60 or so games. I don't want to sit here and talk about a game that the Magic didn't have any, didn't put up a fight enough to give themselves a chance to win. Those days need to be over. Those days should never exist, but they happen. This was a 30 point loss. Don't let that final score fool you. This was a 30 point loss. And the Magic have to be better. We're going to talk about some ways that the Magic can be better and maybe some ways that the Magic can make some adjustments. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word from our pals from Tarot. Tarot is the world's largest car-sharing marketplace. With Tarot, you can book any car you want, wherever you want it, from a community of local hosts. You can browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasional budget across the U.S., U.K., Canada, and now Australia. Book a spacious SUV or minivan for a family road trip. Get a classic or luxury car for a special event, birthday, or holiday. Find affordable economy cars if you're on a budget and just need to get from A to B. Test drive the new electric vehicle you've had your eye on to see how it fits in your everyday life. Many Tarot hosts can even deliver the car right to you. Every trip is backed by liability, insurance, terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. So forget about boring rental cars and find your drive at tarot.com. That's tarot, T-U-R-O, dot com. We want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So, how are the Magic going to get out of this? Um, You know, again, it's... It's easy to diagnose problems and easy to look at a scoreboard and watch this game and say, yeah, yeah, this 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 ain't working. Um, and, and, I, and honestly, eight-game losing streak, yes, all the injuries, yes, all that. And they're still waiting for Wendell Carter. He's going to miss Monday's game against Milwaukee. Mo Bamba's at least questionable, but yes to all of those things. But the Magic have to find a way to compete now. I, I, I know I've said this. I've sat, sat here and said this. Um, yeah, the Magic aren't going to win a lot of games with how many guys are down, but they have enough to compete. They have enough that they should be able to to give themselves an opportunity. And, and, and I think right now there is a little bit of an adjustment going on with Marco Fultz and Cole Anthony coming back into the fold, um, especially for Paolo and Franz. Or you know they, They've been pretty used to being on the ball a significant amount. Um, this offense doesn't pass the ball a lot, and that part is frustrating, but... Um, there, there, there's a flow and a rhythm that this team is still developing and still learning and still getting, and and, and I think you do have to give it some time. But I, 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 I hear a lot of criticisms for Jamal Mosley, and I think some of them are fair. My big one is that he has to really make things simple for this team. He has to really work harder and do better simplifying this offense, simplifying reads, simplifying defensive rotations and, and communication simplifying everything for this team so they can just function on the court. We don't need the complex stuff right now. We don't need the counters or, 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 or kind of the, the deeper level X's and O's. Right now, you just need to be able to run a base set and kind of get into your into your things and, and, and just have a focus. Like, honestly, like even if it's saying, you know, I, I one thing I really, you know, kind of admired about James Borrego when he was here was, you know, when he was the interim coach, he said for those final 30 games, we're going to focus on on locking down the paint. That's that's all we're going to care about. And yeah, they gave up some three-pointers. They were top 10 in the league in the final 30 games and points allowed in the paint um, uh, per game. So honestly, like even something like something simple like that, uh, you know, right now it, it's, it's, it's just such simple 
silly things that have to be fixed. Um, and it's really frustrating and really disappointing that we're talking about these things. The Magic have to have better pride defensively. They're giving up way too many dribble drives. The defensive communication has been terrible all year. Um, this is not a Wendell Carter is out thing, although he certainly would help with the defense because he covers up a lot of mistakes. The Magic's defense just isn't all there right now. Um, and some of it is they're switching a lot. And and I and, and part of me thinks, and there's, there's two sides to that. One is I do think the Magic ultimately want to be a switching team. They want to have guys who can guard one through five or one through four with the center guarding the five. They want guys who can guard multiple positions and, and to be able to switch those screens. But part of me also believes that the Magic are switching a lot of those screens to cover up for the defensive deficiencies of some of their players. Uh, the fact that Franz Wagner is playing the two in these lineups and does not have the speed to keep up with quicker guards. That bowl bowl really struggles in space. Um, and, and, and again... Like, look, I, I think I'm the only person that's raising alarm bells and, and kind of saying these things about Bull Bull. So I apologize. I'm not. I'm trying not to hate on him too much, but teams are targeting him defensively right now. Teams are really chasing him, trying to put him in one-on-one -on -one situations where with their best ball handler specifically, so that they can attack him and they're not afraid of his shot blocking as much as he's capable of blocking shots. I, I, I honestly do not view him as a paint deterrent, and and that's really what the Magic are missing right now. Is, is is either a defense or a group that's going to keep guys out of the paint. Um, even if you have to kind of mock a wall just to keep guys out of the paint. Keep them on the perimeter. Keep them in the mid-range. Let them shoot, you know, not let them shoot threes, but shooting threes should be seen as a victory as long as they're not getting paint touches. It's, just, it's the same thing on offense with the Magic. Have to get paint touches to kind of fan out their offense. The Magic have to prevent paint touches. And so honestly... I'm at the point, and I got to look at the numbers, but I'm at the point where the Magic do need a lineup change. The Magic have to change their lineup. I think they got to take Bull Bull out of the lineup. That's going to tick a lot of people off because he's scoring a ton of points. Um, you have to do it in a way where it's not a demotion for Ball. Like, make him your sixth man, still play him kind of starter level minutes. But I think the Magic need to go more traditional. Say what you want about that end of the fourth quarter run. But it was what? Cole Anthony... Terrence Ross, Caleb Houston. No, it was RJ. It was RJ Hampton, Caleb Houston, Terrence Ross, Admiral Schofield, and Mo Wagner. Um, you know whatever that group was, and there was. It felt like there was more stability from that from that kind of a group from that kind of a team. Um, that's just able to match up more effectively and just kind of you. You know they're still pretty long. They're still pretty big. It's not like they're not big, but. Just it, it it matched up better. It felt like it it flowed a lot better, even offensively with the spacing too. Because you know, right now the spacing offensively isn't great. And it's not that the Magic have a ton of shooters to space the floor anyway, but they have too many guys who need to drive. Um, and 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 I think Bowl because he is a driver too. He needs to kind of not cordoned off, but he needs his own space so that Franz and Paolo can be more successful too. Because Franz and Paolo are struggling right now. You know, adding Markel Fultz, you have four guys who are trying to drive the ball, and that is part of the vision for this team is that anyone can drive, but no one really knows what to do off the ball right now. Bowl is not a great off-the-ball player. Franz is probably the best of those off-the-ball players, and, and he knows how to cut and knows when to do it, but the spacing isn't there for them to do it because everyone's constantly driving and everyone's constantly kind of crowding those driving lanes and those screening lanes, and, and the Magic aren't able to flow. So, you know, adding a guy like, even like a Caleb Houston, you know, Gary Harris would really help. Terrence Ross would help. Adding someone who can just space the floor and be a three-point shooter is going to open up space for those drives. It's going to open up things too. I, I just think right now the Magic don't have a lot of versatility. Um, you know, especially, you know, again, especially adding Mo Wagner in there too, who, yes, he can nominally shoot threes, but that he's really struggling with that. He needs to be around the paint. He needs to be around the basket. And again, it's just, it's almost too big. It's almost like it's it's having the effect that that the Magic want on defense on their offense, where everyone's just kind of too congested. There's not enough space to to, to really work everything. I, I I think I just think that this team needs to rebalance itself, and that's you know again, it's not that Bulls playing bad. Like my my choice right now is you know bring Bull Bull off the bench as your sixth man, um, even if you're starting Cole and Markell together, even if you're playing Markel with Caleb, you know, I thought Caleb Houston did had some great run in the starting lineup a um, couple a, a couple of games ago. Like, he's he, he really came into his own. He plays good defense. That's the kind of thing you need right now. Again, simplify everything. 
It's been an adjustment, and the Magic have done well with these jumbo lineups. I don't think you throw them out completely, but they've clearly kind of worn off. They don't work with the group with the groupings that you have right now, especially against starters. And now you're playing in the hole all the time. You're just making too many mistakes. You need to find some stability. You need to find just some calm, and you just need to find some comfort. And and, and again, it's always difficult playing with new players. It's always difficult kind of injecting that 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 into it, but. The flow is just off right now, and, and and so I think I think you do have to go searching for some answers. And and yes, research it, have some thought behind it. Don't just do something to do something. But I think there's pretty good proof of concept that a kind of more traditional lineup will work for this team. If I'm the, if I'm Jamal Mosley, that's the first thing I do. Um, is this starting lineup, the starting group isn't working? You do need Mo Wagner out there. I, I think that's. I think he is important, although I, he's obviously not the answer either. Um, Bull Bull to me is the guy that I think can transition more effectively to the bench um, and still be effective and still get his minutes and still get his numbers. Uh, it it it's it's just you got to do something. This isn't working. Like it, it isn't working, and so finding especially defensively. Finding ways to simplify things, finding ways to match up Franz with, you know, someone that he can keep up with, uh, with pa- Paolo with someone he can keep up with, um, you know, again rebalancing that lineup. You know, again you got to find some rebounding, and that's part of the problem because Paolo is not a great re- has not been a great rebounder, has not uh, shown some great aptitude aptitude rebounding wise. But right now everyone's kind of targeting the Magic's weakest defenders, and they are just so out of whack defensively that it's. It's really broken this team. We're eight games into this losing streak. The injuries aren't going to change. Eventually, you're going to have to change some of these lineups. Eventually, you know, Wendell Carter will be back and you have to make a choice with some of these players. Um, eventually, Jalen Suggs will be back and you have to make a choice with some of these players. Eventually, Gary Harris will be back. Um, and, and I just think the Magic have to start making these decisions now. They just, they, 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 they just, they just have to, to be perfectly honest. Um, you know, it's... I wish I had better answers. You know, again, like a lot of people, a lot of people kind of come to me and say, you know, Jamal Mosley's got to do something. And, and and to me, it's yes, it's simplify things and, and do that. But, you know, my answer is start Caleb Houston or start Terrence Ross and put Paul Ball on the bench. And, you know, honestly, that's not going to solve a lot of, that's not, not going to solve every problem. It's not going to lead to more games. But right now the goal is just to get back to being competitive every night. Um, and and something does need to change. So I, I I would advocate that yes, a starting lineup change is in the offing. I you know obviously Fultz, Bancaro, Franz all stay. Um, who you shuffle in and out? You know, it's, at that point it's Bol Bol or Mo Wagner. And I think we saw a lineup with Bol Bol at center, and it did not look great. You know, if you can run a five, I think it can work against certain lineups, and you can go five out. Um, that's not going to work against Brooke Lopez and the Milwaukee Bucks. That's not going to work against Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks. The Magic do have to do something. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think they could sit on their hands um, after these games. We're going to go over the box score real fast uh, here in just a moment uh, to wrap up our talk about this game against the Toronto Raptors um, as the Magic try to move forward. So we'll look back as we try to move forward. But first, a quick word from our pals at BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and esports. They've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline, too. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get all your betting fix in. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game goes starts. Let's run through the final box score real fast as the Orlando Magic falls to the Toronto Raptors 121 to 108. I think they gave the Raptors two extra points. That's not the first time Magic did that. Um again, just just a really bad game. Every starter for the Orlando Magic except for Bull Bull had a had a mi- plus minus of at least minus 20. Bull Bull was minus 17. Um, He led the way for the Magic with 18 points on 7-for-8 shooting, 4-for-5 from the foul line, 7 rebounds, 5 turnovers. Like I said, look, this me saying that that I think the Magic should should move Bol Bol to the bench, that's not a statement of how Bol Bol is playing. Bol Bol is playing well. He is, you know, I chuckle just like everyone else at some of the things he does. He 
has a nose for attacking the basketball. He looks like a rook. He he plays like a rookie where he is kind of very single minded, um, but he is very good, um, and he has a place on this team and has a role on this team, um, a very big role at that. To be perfectly honest, right now, um, but the five turnovers were big. A lot of it just double teams and pressure on the ball, knowing that no one else was really attacking, no one else was really playing with energy. So again, this is a credit to Bull Bull that he that he drew that much attention, but. This is something that's been building. You know, he's not a great passer. It's not driving to play make. He is driving to score. And and when he touches the ball, he is trying to score. Um, defensively, teams are targeting him. He is not really doing a great job defending in space. That's that's not expected. I think the Magic, honestly, like again, to me, the problem for the Magic right now is they need to simplify things. There are too many guys that are being put in positions that they are not suited to to succeed in. Bull Bull is not suited to succeed when he has to guard a wing player in space. This is part of the problem with Bull Bull is you just you don't know where to put him because he can't really give you much defensively on the perimeter. Um, you know, part of the reason why I think the Magic plays so much zone is to hide Bull Bull, is to is to make it easier for him so he's not constantly defending players in space. Again, the Magic's communication is so poor that it does not matter as much um, about it. But uh, but. Teams are putting Bull Bull in really bad spots. It's put Franz in really bad spots. It's put, you know, Paolo to some extent in really bad spots. The Magic have to simplify things so that they could put their best players in spots where they can succeed on both ends of the floor. Not a lot of scoring outside of Bull Bull, especially in that starting group. Paolo Bancaro, his worst game of the season, nine points, two for eight shooting, one for five from deep, just six free throw attempts for him. Um, first game held under 10 points. Actually, his first game held under 15 points. Um, except, uh, I believe so, um, for the Magic this season. Just, uh, again, could not get himself going. The Magic just could not figure out Toronto's length. Toronto has length just like the Magic does, but their length is skilled too. Um, they're not overly big. OG Ananobi is a skilled player who can hit from the outside. He had 32 points on 12 for 17 shooting. Pascal Siakam is a skilled big who can work the perimeter on both ends. He had 26 points on 9 for 15 shooting, adding 10 assists and 8 rebounds. Scotty Barnes is a super skilled player who can work the perimeter as well. 17 points, 8 for 10 shooting. And look, Orlando has some of that in Paolo and Franz for sure, but when you can throw three of those guys at them and switch everything, that makes it really hard to crack. And again, this is the kind of defense that the Magic really struggle to crack. And, and again, they're just not making great decisions. Every player for the Magic starting lineup, except for Markel Fultz, had at least three turnovers. Paolo had two. Markel had one. Mo and Franz Wagner had three. Bull Bull had five. So again, Orlando turns the ball over 16 times for 25 points. That's easy money for Toronto. Franz Wagner also a really poor game. Orlando's just not going to win games when both Paolo and Franz played this poorly. Nine points, four for eight shooting. And again, Franz did okay. Only 22 and a half minutes. Really struggled with some... Uh, really just, you know, again, the Magic essentially at a certain point, they were down so much. Just use this as a rest game for Paolo and Franz. So maybe this isn't a game to really to get a good read on either. Uh, for Paolo played only 27 minutes in this game. Get, get, get Getting them some extra rest probably wasn't the worst thing in the world. Marco Fultz to 7 points, 4 assists um, for him, 3 for 8 shooting, still kind of getting himself back into rhythm. You can see that, but you can also see that the Magic do play a lot better when they do have a point guard out there. I thought Cole Anthony was pretty solid. 12 points, 4 for 10 shooting, 5 assists, no turnovers for him. He's been pretty good. Coming back, really confident, stepping into a shot. Um, you know, again, just maybe still struggling to finish at the rim and, and, and some of those driving decisions that, that that we're used to with him. I think that'll come. He's he's looked really good in his return. And again, I'm not against starting him. You know, gives it makes you a little small. Cole is also someone that doesn't defend particularly well, um, but I think there are some good things there to think about too. Ter- it, what, what really sucks about this game is Magic wasted a good Terrence Ross game. 18 points, perfect, seven for seven from the floor, four for four from beyond the arc. You know, again, a lot of that coming in the fourth quarter uh, when the game was already decided. Orlando started to, to kind of make the score look respectable, um, but he, you know, he was hitting the shots, and and, and the Magic have to take advantage of that. Uh, Admiral Schofield, a nice game, thirteen points, three for seven shooting, six for six from the foul line. Don't really need to say a whole lot about him. Caleb Houston, eight points, three for nine shooting. Uh, like I said, I, I think Caleb Houston does really good things. He's generally in the right spots defensively. He's still fouling a little too much. Once that three-point shooting comes around, he's going to be a really, really valuable player. So I, I, I really like what I'm seeing from Caleb Houston. We've gone through some of Toronto's scores. They turn the ball over 17 times for 29 points. That would normally keep Orlando in the game. Um, Orlando shoots 11 for 28 from three. 
They get to the line 26 times. There, there is really no reason the Magic should have been blown out the way that they were, but they give up 36 in the first quarter, 28 in the second, 30 in the third, even 27 in the fourth in a quarter that they played well in. Um, doesn't matter that Toronto did not shoot the ball particularly well. Through three quarters, Orlando was giving up 54.7% shooting. They were shooting just 46.6%, just 6 for 20 from beyond the arc. So a lot of that three-point shooting coming in the fourth quarter. 14 turnovers through three quarters for Toronto for 24 points. So, you know, Toronto let Orla- would have let Orlando stay in this game if they could have gotten stops beyond their turnovers. The Magic defense just didn't come to play. The offense didn't play particularly well. It was just too easy for the Raptors. And again, that's the problem for Orlando right now is every is there's just very, very little resistance and very, very little to stop them. And again, we expected this team to be a better defensive team. It, the greatest disappointment of the season is the Magic's defense just looks lost. Um, and again, that that is on Jamal Mosley. I, I, I'm not going to sit here. Uh, you know, I will defend Jamal Mosley a lot. They need to simplify a lot of things because the defense is not working the way it's meant to. Whether that's because they need the personnel that that are sitting on the bench, they needed Jalen Suggs, they needed Wendell Carter to make, to make all these pieces click in place. If that's the case, look, you need to be able to build a base defense that can work with everybody, that everyone knows the responsibilities uh, and isn't reliant on the specific skills of certain players. Um, you know, you should be able to function defensively when Wendell Carter's out of the game. You should be able to defend, you know, with some resistance, no matter who's in there. That's not happening. And again, that plainly is unacceptable. That, you know, this team cannot be non-competitive. The goal for the season was simply to compete, was to give themselves all those chances, that opportunity to win more games, right? You know, again, these eight, these this eight-game losing streak, that is largely not happening, and that is unacceptable. The Magic fall to the Toronto Raptors 121 to 108 at Scotiabank Arena. Orlando starts a five-game homestand. So another big opportunity to try and get some wins, build some consistency, get in the get in the Advent Health Training Center, get some work in to kind of shore things up. Did not happen during the seven-game homestand. Uh, they're getting a five-game homestand here. So the homestands are going to be pretty precious here the rest of the season. These are big opportunities missed for this team. Now you got to find a way to scratch out some wins, get back, get 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 back some of those positive vibes. And again, like I said, I think some change needs to happen to make it happen. That home scene will open Monday night against uh, the Milwaukee Bucks. So yeah, not it, life is not easy for this Magic team. We'll have coverage of that coming up on our next episode of Locked On Magic. But that's gonna do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter. At Philip RR underscore OMD. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Sit your tune in Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the fun places in the podcast to your podcast enabled listening device. For the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out Orlando Magic You can follow us there on Twitter at O Magic Daily. Now that you're done listening to us, be sure to check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. That's good to do for me, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked on Magic, this has been Philip Rossman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked on Magic.